Join today's Making Their Case. Carl Rove is predicting the future again. Yeah, uh, the uh, man known as Bush's brain once predicted the election of President Bush would usher in a generation of Republican rule. Well, that lasted six years. But now Rove says Republican wins in New Jersey and Virginia gubernatorial elections next Tuesday could signal big things for the party in 2010. Virginia Democrat Cray Deeds trails Republican Bob McDonald by 18 points, according to a poll from Virginia Commonwealth University. Meanwhile, in New Jersey, Republican Chris Christie is locked in a close battle with incumbent Democrat John Corzine, despite Corzine, the former chairman of Goldman Sachs, outspending Christie by a three to one margin. In today's Wall Street Journal, Rove writes, quote, GOP victories in either state will tell Democrats in red states and districts that support for Obama's policies is risky to their political health. Well, maybe, maybe not, but putting Rove aside, what do these races say about the short-term political future for both parties? Here to make their case, Peter Slutsky, a blogger on Doublespeak and the Huffington Post. Also with us, Liz Mayer, who blogs at LizMayer.com and is also the former online communications director for the Republican National Committee. Uh, Peter, let's start with you. Can we draw any national implications based on these state races? Well, I, I don't think so, no. First of all, I think it's kind of ironic and, and funny that we're still listening to Karl Rove. You, you kind of alluded to it in your intro, but, you know, if you don't like what you're seeing right now with the U.S. economy, with our foreign policy, and these are all the holes that President Obama and the administration are trying to dig out that uh, brought to you by George Bush and George Bush's brain, Karl Rove. So, you know, I take everything he says with a grain of salt, but no, I, I don't think that these necessarily have national implications. These are two very individual uh, uh, stories going on in two very different states, and there's different factors playing out. But, you know, we're always quick to try to, to judge these races and prejudge these races. Let's see what happens over the weekend. I think uh, you're going to see some closing in New Jersey, and, you know, Creed Deeds might just be uh, too far gone at this point to, to take it away, but I'll take one for one. Liz, your view. Yeah, I think it's fairly clear at this point that Bob McDonnell is going to win in Virginia. I do think that part of that is as a result of Creed Deeds having run a thoroughly awful campaign. Uh, I also think that some of that, however, is the fact that President Obama's policies, particularly in economic areas, are not particularly popular with a lot of people in Virginia, and people have real questions. So, you know, Republicans can take heart to some extent. I also think that year is a long time until the next election, and a lot of things can change for better or for worse. You know, but ultimately, uh, it will be very gratifying to see a Republican win the gubernatorial race in Virginia. Liz, I wonder if we could uh, switch and move this around a little bit and talk about uh, the, the big news today, economic news, of course, the GDP. It signifies that we're out of the recession now, even though a lot of Americans aren't feeling it because they still don't have jobs and unemployment may rise a little bit. How does that cut politically? I think, to be honest with you, you know, your point about a lot of Americans still hurting is very valid, and I think that that is the prism through which a lot of voters and a lot of Americans look at things. At the end of the day, you know, people can look at indicators like GDP, people can look at indicators like what's going on with the stock market, but if you've got 20% unemployment in your town, your impression of the economy is not going to be that everything is swell, and that's just how that goes. And Peter, if unemployment is still high this time next year, then that could have, even if we have several quarters of economic growth, if unemployment still remains high, that could be an election problem for Democrats, right? Absolutely. I mean, we know that uh, employment numbers and unemployment numbers are a lagging indicator. They oftentimes take take a couple quarters to catch up with other factors. And, you know, Liz is right that, uh, you know, from a 30,000 foot standpoint, economic data is is good news when it moves in the right direction. But it's a personal uh, it's a personal thing. And if you're employed and you're you have money and you have credit, that's a very different thing. And same thing with your neighbors. And it's going to take a while for this to turn around. But keep in mind, the mess we're in uh, was caused by the Republicans. It was caused by Karl Rove, who is now coming out uh, with his grandiose uh, thoughts and feelings about uh, the way these uh, elections are going to cut. Liz, I got to ask you about. Uh, we've been mentioning on the screen Republicans divided in New York 23. That refers to the special election of the New York congressional uh, race uh, next week. Um, what is it about the Republican Party that there you have Newt Gingrich saying, "Look, let's just go with the Republican nominee. We shouldn't have outsiders telling Republicans in New York who their candidate should be." And you have people like Sarah Palin, Fred Thompson, others saying, "No, no, no. Let's not support the Republican. Let's support the third party who happens to be more conservative." 
Well, ultimately, I, you know, I got to be honest with you. I think that it's fairly clear in this case that the Republican candidate has a lot of issues, and we're not just talking about social issues, the stuff that people normally hone in on. There are a lot of issues on which she is very divergent from not just, you know, frankly, the majority of the Republican base, which is conservative, but even people who are described as moderate Republicans. You know, I'm a socially more moderate Republican, but there are plenty of things that I disagree with her about, and I, I think that that's a serious concern for a lot of people within the party. And Peter, we'll give you the last word on that. Sure. Well, I think what you're seeing play out, and, and we've been saying this for a while now, is that, that um, in the post-election uh, era, and uh, the Republicans are really trying to have kind of a conversation about where they want to go, what kind of party they want to be, and ultimately they'll win on ideas. But this has been really interesting to watch up in, up in New York to see how the dynamics play out, whether they're going to go with the Republican nominee or they're going to go with an outsider. And uh, it's lining up in all different ways. It's been fascinating. I agree with both of you. Peter Slutsky and Liz Mayer, thank you very much. And Alex, they really are going through something of an identity crisis in terms of the Republican Party and the Northeast and, and exactly what their positions are going to be. You are absolutely right. And to that end, we're going to have full team coverage on Election Day on MSNBC. We'll have all the usual breaking news and analysis from the best political team in the business. That will be next Tuesday right here on MSNBC.